Welcome once again to uh, Metro U. Uh, tonight we're going to be studying uh, uh, Psalm 119, verses 145 through 152. And um, as I was preparing this lesson, um, there are some thoughts that came to my mind, and um, we're going to share on the lesson uh, when we get into it. But first, let's have a word of prayer. Our Father and God, we thank you for this time, and we ask now that you may allow your spirit to be with us, to teach us, to, to, to uh, edify us, Lord, and, and help us to understand your word, and that we may learn to apply it to our lives, to be better Christians and to be more like you. Bless your word into our hearts as we glorify your name. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I know it's a, a lot of a, a little well a lot of rain uh, throughout the day, um, and it kind of get cold. Uh, we were at the cemetery, as I mentioned to some of the folks, and and it was freezing out there with the wind and the rain. So, you know, thank you for braving the weather and coming out tonight for uh, Metro U. Now, Psalm um, one four to one nineteen verses uh, one four to five. 145 through 152. Um, we're going to read the, 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 the section, uh, and then we're going to um, get into our lesson. One, uh, one verses 145 through 152. And I'm reading uh, to you tonight, from this evening, from the New King James Version. And it says... Uh, it says, I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statues. I cry out to you. Save me and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O Lord, revive me according to your justice. They draw, near with, they draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Concerning your, your testimonies, I have known of old that you have founded them forever. Psalm 119, verses 145 through 152. Now, this, this psalm, this portion uh, that we, we have here tonight, I don't know if anybody gets a, a gist of what is going on here, what the psalmist is saying. We don't know if, if it is it's David who wrote the psalm, but the psalmist, whoever wrote the psalm, is now in a mode of prayer. This is a prayer psalm. This, is, this section of the psalm is a prayer uh, that he's crying out to God for help. So um, we know how important prayer is. Prayer is very important in our lives. And um, it so happened that, again, while I was uh, preparing this lesson, a song came to my mind, right? A song came to my mind. And then Sunday, uh, last week, Pastor played a song pertaining to the Bible, which is the Word of God, Right? Sunday, he also used a song to highlight his message. And I, I said to myself, I wonder why is this happening now? Because I want to play a song. <laughs> so the song that I'm going to play for you, I'm not going to play the whole song, but I'm going to play part of the song. And it has, uh, um, it's really an important thing for us as Christians. It's, it's called uh, Prayer Changes Everything. Right? So... Just listen to the first part of the song. I'm going to tell Brother Kenny when to stop it, and then we can go into the lesson. Go ahead, Brother Kenny. Prayer fix it every time.
Amen. Amen. A pardon? <laughs> Prayer will fix it every time. And the beautiful thing about the song, that the words that, that caught me is saying that even while when we are praying, God is already answering. The answer is on its way. He knows everything we think. He knows what, we, what, we, what we're going to say. He knows everything. That's how uh, uh, God op operates in our lives. But it all comes through prayer, right? Prayer, the prayer of the righteous, we say, availeth much. And this psalmist here is writing, is crying out to God in prayer. So Psalm 119, 145 to 152 is about the psalmist's plea for God's intervention, guidance, and salvation. In these verses, the psalmist expressed devotion to God's word uh, and seek understanding and deliverance from his trouble. The verses uh, emphasizes reliance on God's word for strength and comfort in difficult times. In Psalm 119, 145 through 52, the, the psalmist passionately seek God's intervention, expressing deep devotion to his law despite facing afflictions. They turn to, he turns to God's word for guidance and comfort, pleading for deliverance and salvation. The psalmist affirms their commit, his commitment to follow God's precepts and trust in his faithfulness and righteousness. This passage reflects on wavering faith in God and dependence on his word in times of trouble. So, um, as he says, it's a passionate prayer. It's, it's a prayer that he wants God to intervene. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes when we pray, I, I think sometimes we might use prayer just as like a passing phase. You know, okay, I, I, I just need to pray, so I, I pray. But in actual word, praying, when you're praying, is, is a time to really get serious with God. And when I say serious, I don't mean to have a serious face. But, but I'm saying to be serious in your attitude of prayer, right? And this is what the psalmist here is trying to bring out to us uh, this evening. Um, as the, t the title of our, our lesson is Praying with Assurance, is to have that assurance that God is going to answer our prayer. When we pray, I don't think any one of us here, when we pray, we just pray and say, well, you know, if God answers, he answers. We pray with an assurance in our mind that when I pray, God is going to answer. And yes, maybe God doesn't answer, you know, right away. He, he might not answer when you want him to answer. But I'm, I'm, I'm assured, again, the assurance that prayer is being answered. Prayer is being answered. So, um... The psalmist in the passage uh, uh, where the psalmist expressed deep devotion to God's law and seek help and deliverance. Uh, the psalmist pleads uh, for God's intervention, knowledge, uh, acknowledging their, his uh, commitment to follow God's precept. Despite facing afflictions and troubles, he turned to God's word for guidance and comfort. The verses convey the psalmist's trust in God's faithfulness and righteousness as they rely on his promises for salvation and renewal. Overall, it reflects the psalmist's unwavering faith in God and dependence on his word. That is a, a kind of an overview of, um, of uh, Psalm 145 uh, through uh, 152. But if you have your handout Let's, let's look at, at our handout uh, the, um, in the syllabus there, uh, page 19, if you have it, page 19, and let's go through the verses here in Psalm 145, 119, sorry. Uh, our prayer, our prayer life, what, what is our prayer life like? Um, our prayer life should not only be for what God can do for us or what we can get from God, but, to but rather to maintain our relationship with God. It's a two-way street. It's not only we keep asking God, well, do this for me and do this for me and do that for me, but sometimes God wants us to do something for him as well. 
And none of us sometimes really see it that way. We just believe that God is there for us to ask for stuff. But God also will require something from us as well. Because God says if we draw near to him, he's going to draw near to us. Right? So he's asking us to draw near to him. Draw near how? How can we draw near to him? We can draw near to him in prayer. We can draw near to him in, in, in reading his word. Uh, we can draw near to him in even singing his songs. It, it's drawing near to God. And he's re- asking us just to do that. He says, if you want me to be near to you, then draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. So our prayer lives is not only to, to ask God for things, but to also maintain our relationship. Our prayer time should not only be asking God for things, we should also spend time, part of our time, in worship, thanking God for who he is and all that he has done. It says, and giving him what he rightly deserves. What he rightly deserves, our praises and our thanks. When we receive from God, it's only natural that we say thank you. In, in our everyday lives as, 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 as you know, people, uh, somebody gave you something, you say thank you. Somebody opened the door for you, you say thank you. Similarly, when God does something for you, we need to respond by thanking him for it. Because that's all we can do for him is thank him and praise him. So the psalmist is, is, is encouraging us uh, uh, this evening that when we pray, as we're going we're gonna to see when we get into the verses, we should not only t- ask God for stuff, but also uh, let God, let our relationship be enhanced by our prayer. Um, in Psalm 119, verse 145, the, the first part of it, it says, Pray with all your heart. And if somebody could find Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, and somebody else, Psalm 66 and 18. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, and Psalm 66 and 18. And if somebody could read that for me, please. Pray with all your heart. Go right ahead. Who has it? Amen. Psalm 66 and 18. Okay, in other words, the psalmist is saying, if I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. In other words, he's saying we can't be double-minded, so to speak. We can't want God to hear us, and we are not doing what God is asking us to do. If we have iniquity, which is, is sin, which is, you know, things that are not supposed to be there, he is saying, I won't hear you because how, how can you ask a holy God to help you and in your heart you have something against somebody or you have something going on that is not, not should be going on in your life. Your life needs uh, a straightening out and cleaning up. But this, in the same way, you, if you pray for him to help you to do that, to clean it up, He's also going to do that for you. So that's why I said prayer is so important in our lives. And the psalmist is pointing that out when when he says, pray with all your heart. He says, um, what what, what he says again in Proverbs 3 and 5? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean on your own understanding. With all your heart, it means I'm going to fully give myself over to it. With all your heart. Don't hold back. But give fully over to him, he says, with all my heart, and lean not unto my own understanding. Uh, And it goes on to say, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Right? So when we we come to him in prayer, we come to him with our whole heart. Uh, When we do our devotions, I don't know what time you do your devotions, whether it's in the morning or in the evening. I don't know what time you do it. But when you come to God uh, uh, during your devotions and you're going to pray, you you need to come to him with your whole heart. You you need to uh, maybe shut off the TV. Have some quiet time. Uh, for me, I can be honest, I, 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 I use all kinds of times when I, when I, 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 I have devo- my devotion sometimes. Most time I do it in the morning around uh, 5, 5.30. And everything is off. And it helps me, I don't know about you, but it helps me to concentrate on what I'm doing when I'm having my devotions. Because I know if I have the TV on, I may tend to be looking and see what's going on there and doing the devotions at the same time. So giving your whole heart over, it's a saying, pray without, um, sorry, 
is uh, giving your whole heart over to God and lean not unto your understanding with all your ways acknowledge him and he can direct your part. And, and Psalm says, if you re, uh, have iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. Uh, number two says, pray all the time. Yes, it says pray all the time. And if somebody could find 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 16 and 17, uh, you could read that please to me. But in Psalm, the Psalm we are studying, it says in verse 147 and 148, it says, I rise before the dawn of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. So he is saying from morning and until night, he says, I keep crying unto God. I pray all the time. So who has 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. What is praying without ceasing? Continuously. Pray without ceasing means to pray continually. But listen to this. This does not mean that you have to be in a state of prayer during every waking moment. Why do you think that? All it means is that not every waking moment we can be praying because we have to have time for other stuff. Simple as that. We have to have time for taking care of ourselves, taking care of our family. We have to have time for, for work. We have to, but he's saying... Not every waking moment we can be praying, but this is what it says too. It says, uh, pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean continually. Um, uh, this doesn't mean you ought, you have uh, to be part. You have to be in a state of prayer during every waking moment. Rather, we ought to be in a constant prayerful state. So, in other words, it's saying we have to have a, a, a mind, a prayerful mind, that when the opportunity presents itself, we can pray. We don't pray every waking uh, moment in our lives, but when the moment presents itself, then we can pray. Like on your job, you don't pray all through the 8 hours or 12 hours or 16 hours you're working. But if during that 16 hours or 12 hours an opportunity presents itself, you can pray. So that's what it means praying continually, is that you, you take the opportunity that presents itself to you when you can pray and pray. You, you take every opportunity, if possible, that you can use to pray and pray. So it says in 1 Thessalonians, pray continually. Uh, number three says, pray as if it all depends on God. And that's 1 John 1 9. 1 John 1 9. What 1 John 1 9 says? Who has it? 1 John 1 9. Go ahead. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Unrighteousness. If we f confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Relying on God, depending on God, that if we confess, he is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us. We depend on him to do that. We rely, we rely on him to do that. We are praying with the assurance that that is what God can do. If we confess our sins, uh, uh, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Not only it all depends on God, but we need to depend on God. We need uh, all we can get, all, all the help we can get. We need to lean, learn to lean and depend on God because He is dependable. He is dependable. When everything else fails us, when our family fails us, when, when whatever is going on or fails us, we can depend on God. When everybody walks out on us, uh, there, there's a saying, a true friend is the one who stays when everybody else walks out. Right? And th this, this is what God is to us. 
when everybody gives up on us, when everybody gives up on us, God st is still there. God is not going anywhere, right? So uh, it's, it's not only that we, we, uh, we depend, that, uh, you know, God is dependable, but we also need to depend on him. We, we want him to know that we trust him and we, we believe in him, right? And the psalmist is crying out here in, in uh, verse 149 when he says, Hear my voice according to your loving kindness, O Lord. Revive me according to your justice. Um, in, this, in this portion, there are words like law, like uh, commandments, uh, testimonies. These are words all referring to God's word. These are words referring to God's word. So everything that the psalmist is talking about here is referring to God's word. So when he says in, Psalm, in, in, one, in verse 149, Hear my voice according to your loving kindness, O Lord. Revive me according to your justice. Uh, he's talking about God's word. He's saying, your word, to me, your word is a lamp unto my feet and the light into your path, my pathway. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. So uh, he says, just uh, pray as if it all depends on God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. God wants to do for us what we can do for ourselves. That's all God wants to do for, do for us. He wants to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And then number four says, Pray to God who is already there. And that's a, a wonderful statement there. Pray to God who is already there. Um, there's a saying that God uh, is, is in my yesterday, he's in my today, and he's already in my tomorrow. Right? He's in my yesterday, he's in my today, and he's already in my tomorrow. Why? Because he knows what the future holds. From, because he holds the future. So he's, he's always there. He is already there and always there. Doesn't matter where you are or where you go. He is there. And if somebody, I'm just going to give uh, three scriptures quickly. and we, We're going to close off our lesson. It says Joshua 1 and 9. Somebody find Joshua 1 and 9, please. And somebody find Psalm 139 and verse, uh, well, we're not going to read the whole thing, but verse 8 through 12. Joshua 1, 9, Psalm 139. Verses 8, 12, and Deuteronomy 31, 6. Those three scriptures. If somebody can find them, please. Joshua 1, 9. And Deuteronomy 31, 6. And as, as you look for them... Uh, uh, the, the, the scripture we are reading here is, is verses 150 and 151, where the, the psalmist is crying out to God when he says, uh, he says, They draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your laws. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. In other words, he's saying here, there are a lot of us who draw near to God with our mouth, but our heart, is far from him. And there's a scripture that also backs that up. That we praise him with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. And he's calling us, that he's saying that when we come to him, again, we must come fully to him. No, no, no distractions. Nothing to hold us back, but come freely to him. Yes, anybody who has uh, the scriptures I give there, uh, Joshua 1 9. Who has that? Go ahead. Right. Wherever you go, he's with you. And he's saying, don't be afraid. That's, what, when, that's when Joshua was going to take over from Moses, when Moses died. God came to Joshua and says, Look, Moses is dead. Now you got to take over. And like any one of us may be placed in such a, a position of leadership, we might want, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this? And God reminded Joshua and says, look, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And if you read further down in that scripture there, it says, just as I was with Moses, 
I will also be with you. So he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to always be there for you. So, Joshua, so he said to Joshua, don't be afraid, because wherever you go, I'll be there with you. And one of the things about that is as Christians, have we ever really stopped to think that wherever we go, God is with us? It's not like, okay, you're going to go someplace, and then you can say, okay, God, you know what? You stay here, and I'm going to go in here and do my stuff, and then I'm going to come back and pick you up, and then we're going to go home together. That's not how God operates, is that he's with you all the time. In other words, when I was reading this, though, a light came on in my head and tells me that I got to remember that because be careful how we do certain things because he's with us. He's always there with us. And when we do wrong, he's there with us. When we do right, he's there with us, right? So we got to be careful. We got to be careful when we, as Christians, when we go places, when we do things, how we do them and, and where we do them. Because remember this, God says he's always with us. He says, I will never leave. If somebody could read the next scripture, Psalm 139, verses 8 through 12. Uh, somebody read that, please. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. Amen. Amen. That, that, that's the God we serve. Wherever you go, he's always there. He's always there. You're saying even the darkness. You know, sometimes we turn off the light and say, okay, God is not going to see me now. No, he is light in the darkness. He is light in the darkness. Darkness cannot comprehend him. He is darkness. When he comes in, all darkness disappears because he's there. And like, uh, I think there's a song that says, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. God knows. When you close the door, don't think you lock him out. You know, <laughs> he, he's, he's in there with you. So I, 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 I guess that was a sobering moment for me when I read it too, because I, as much as I've been a Christian for all these times, I, sometimes we learn even though we are older. We never stop learning. And I, I realize that wherever I go, whatever I do, however I do it, God is there with me. And the last one is Deuteronomy toward the 1.6. Exactly is what he said. He says... I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. I will always be there with you wherever you go. And this is what the psalmist is crying out to God because of what he's going through. With all the situations he's facing, with everything he's experiencing, he's saying, you know what? Prayer is the only thing that can fix it. Prayer will fix it anytime. He's never too busy to hear your, your, your cry. And, and even today, I... I Mentioned this little song that we used to sing when I was a, a, a teenager growing up in church. It says, reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. He's always there. He doesn't take a vacation. Uh, we even heard that, you know, uh, he never slumbered nor sleep. Pardon? <laughs> well, that's, that's another one. God doesn't wear pajamas. Okay, which means he doesn't go to bed. He, 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 he's awake. And, and, and in closing, this is the, the part I want to mention to you as well. You remember the, the story in, in the New Testament, I think it's in Luke, where the, he was in the ship with the disciple and the storm and he was sleeping? Let me say this. He was sleeping, but yet he was in control. Even if you want to say the Lord sleeps, 
He sleeps, but he's still in control. He knows what's going on. Because when the disciples woke him up and says, don't you care that we perish? What he said to them, O ye of little faith. He knows what was going on. He knows what was going on. So, uh, fellow brothers and sisters this evening, remember that even when we are going through the rough times, even when we are going through the trying times, God is there with us. He's, as we said, he's only a prayer away. He's only a prayer away. So tonight, if there's nothing else you learn, remember that God will never leave you, he will never forsake you, and he's always there to lend a helping hand. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for your, your many blessings, Lord. And oh God, thank you that you have made it possible for us to cry out to you in times of need, in times of struggle. And not only in those times, but even in times when things are going good with us, we can lift our voices and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. And Father, we want to be obedient to your word. We want to, to, to respond to your word, O oh God, that you said if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. So please, God, in your own way, and in, we ask in our hearts individually and collectively to help us to draw closer to you, and you will draw closer to us. Now, Lord, as we go from this place, but never from your presence, take us there in peace and in safety. And thank you again even for the rain, for you know we need it, Lord. And a little rain must fall in everyone's life. So thank you again, Lord, as we give you the praise and the thanks. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.